And uh, you know, it's a beautiful day here. We had a cyclone coming through here last night, but it's a beautiful day here. But the people of New York State are hurting. The value of their homes and their assets has declined, but the principal of the mortgages stayed the same. They are there, and their unemployment and underemployment's at 17%. People, if they have a job, are scared of losing it. And you know, as a result of this, people are saving more and they are spending less. Yet the last four state budgets, Democratic budgets, the Spitzer, Patterson, Shelley Silver budgets, every one of them has increased spending, increased taxes, and increased fees. And what does Andrew Cuomo say about that? He says, well, he's going to control the rate of spending. But he's got a large deficit, almost $15 billion. The next elected governor's got to face to that. Let me tell you, he's going to increase taxes if he were governor. So he's not going to be elected governor because the people of New York are, know that the next governor has to be determined to cut spending and just like the people of New York State are doing with their home budgets. And that means Carl Palladino, who has pledged to cut spending by 20%, to cut taxes by 10%, and to bring jobs back to New York, and you know he'll do it, and that's why Carl Palladino is going to be elected the next governor of New York State. And you know, the other problem in Albany is that after the last elections, when the Democrats got control of the state Senate, they got control of everything in Albany for the first time since the 1930s. And there's a saying, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Well, it didn't take long for it to happen. Alan Hevesy had to leave because of financial corruption. And uh, Patterson's not elected governor because of Spitzer's moral corruption. And you just saw with the AEG scandal and other scandals, all three Democratic leaders in the, uh, in, in the uh, uh, state Senate are either under investigation or they are charged with, uh, with uh, uh, impeding an investigation. And New York and Albany has just gone awry. And in upstate is not represented. In all this confusion, there's only one man running things in Albany. It used to be three men in a room, but it's only one. And that man is Shelley Silver, who was elected. Speaker of the Assembly is elected by several thousand votes in lower Manhattan in, in New York City. Well, that's not a mandate to govern, to govern New York State. We need to have a Republican governor who represents all of New York State, not just New York City, to govern New York State, and that's going to be Carl Palladino. Yeah. And you know, I served in the Reagan administration, and I saw what Ronald Reagan did as President of the United States. He crushed inflation, he lowered taxes, uh, rationalized the tax code and brought us prosperity for 20 years. But he couldn't have done it if he hadn't had a Republican Senate that was elected along with him in 1980. And you know, New York State is not represented, the upstate New York, upstate New York is not represented in Albany at the moment. Western New York is not represented in the, the way it should be because the, all the people who control, whether it's the Democrats in the state Senate, their leaders, or whether it's Shelley Silver or whether it's Patterson, they all come from New York City. It's about time that upstate had representation, Western New York had reputation, not just in the governorship, but also by electing a Republican majority in the state Senate. And come November 2nd, that's what we're going to do. We're going to re-elect Mike Ransenhofer to the Senate. And you're going to elect Mark Prasanti to the Senate. And you're going to elect Jack Quinn to the Senate. And, uh, and you're going to have here a, the representation. Pardon? Lenny Roberto for Congress. Uh, absolutely. We're getting to Lenny Roberto. Uh, and so that we have the representation here from Western New York that is deserved in the leadership of a Republican majority in, 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 in the state Senate. But now I want to turn to what's going on nationally. In, in Albany, it's been the corruption of power. It's been the corruption of power. And uh, in Washington, it was the arrogance of power. When the Democrats took over everything in Washington in, uh, in the last elections in 2008, uh, they had large majorities in both houses, and they had elected as President of the United States the most liberal uh, 
senator in the United States Senate, Barack Obama. And they felt they could do anything they wanted, any big government program they wanted, and boy, they tried them all. The stimulus bill that for the most part stimulated nothing but their, but their political allies. Cap and trade that's just going to drive char uh, jobs offshore, away from the United States. And of course, Obamacare. Obamacare that uh, it, it will do nothing to bend the cost curve down. Anyone who's looked at their premiums, it's just going up. Obamacare that takes over one-fifth of the economy of the United States by the federal government. Uh, you know, it's time for a change in Washington, too. It's time to elect a Republican majority to the House of Representatives. And that's what we're going to do come November 2nd. And Lenny Roberto is going to join a re-elected Chris Lee as congressman from Western New York. Uh, Lenny Roberto, come on up here. There is no more appropriate place to have a press conference concerning the future of our country than right here in the shadow of the Sullivans. I'm a member of an elite group sailors who have served in the United States Navy, men who have taken up arms to protect our country. And at this moment in time, there is a government in Washington that is destroying the country that my brothers and I fought and died for. We cannot allow that to happen. We cannot allow these people to destroy our country and pass that heritage onto our children and our grandchildren. I'm going to Washington with a vendetta, if you will, because they have taken away our liberties. They have taken away the financial security that we had worked for for multiple generations so we could pass it on to our children. With the health care bill and cap and trade and the stimulus plan and all the other failed programs of this administration and other administrations in the past, we have jeopardized, they have jeopardized the future of America and our children. When I get to Washington, I will work diligently as a sailor, as a member of a, an elite group of men and women who have defended this country, and I will begin to defend it from the very government we elected to represent us. We need people in Washington who go there with conviction, courage, that are willing to take on the status quo, who are willing to fight in the trenches for the people of Western New York and for the United States. I'm committed to doing that. And with the help of Nick and the volunteers that you see here and the hundreds of volunteers throughout this district, we are going to win this election and we will make a difference. Thank you. We know the problems that we're facing on every level, but we look at Albany in particular. Out of control spending, runaway taxes, most troubling for me given my background as a trooper and then sheriff of Erie County is a culture of corruption that we have seen in Albany especially the last few years, unlike at any other time. We look several months, several months ago, we look at the Senate Democrat majority looking to sell seats on a labor advisory council for $50,000 to have influence. We look at what we've seen in the last few, few days, the same Senate Democrat majority in another scandal, another pay-to-play scheme that, that has permeated every level in Albany. It's a disgrace. It's criminal. It must stop. The way we stop it is by sending honest, decent, committed people to Albany. The way we do it is by electing Republicans, by taking back the, the majority, properly representing citizens, properly representing upstate, standing up to the New York City interests, and making decisions that are for the benefit of the citizens, benefit of our community, benefit of our state. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate the support of all of the people that have been involved in this campaign across Western New York. I appreciate the partnership with the people standing up here today and the, and the others that are out there trying to do the right thing. We have a few more days to go. You can be assured that I will continue to work, not just through Tuesday, but beginning in January when we start putting our state in the right direction.